Cool. All right, folks. As we talk to Tim Ord every Tuesday and Thursday at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time, we have Tim on the line. You can reach Tim at his website, ord-oracle.com. And uh, we're going to talk some ratios, man. Looking forward to it. Tim Ord, good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. Thanks for having me on again. My pleasure, man. I was doing my program yesterday, and I was talking about, you know, pretty interesting. I talked to you last Thursday. And we were referencing maybe Tuesday where this market will be. It's held up pretty well, man. We're sitting just under 5,100 right now. Um, I got your charts ready. Where do we want to kick things off, Tim? Uh, actually, look, this chart one is, is probably the most important one right now. And uh, uh, this is uh, the monthly SPX um, or the Standard Poor's 500. It goes back to about mid-2016. And what's... Um, what's going on here, if you look up to the right, where we are right now, which is upper right-hand corner, yep. uh, it's a candlestick pattern going on. We're about basically 50% above the upper Bollinger Band. And that's kind of a, uh, on a short-term basis, that's kind of an exhaustion move to the upside. If it's less than 50%, usually there's not a problem. The market is not really too exuberant, I guess you might say. They're going to move higher. Uh, so I circled the times going back to mid-2016, the times when 50% of the candle was above the upper Bollinger Band. And every time that happened, uh, you know, this is a monthly chart. A lot of times the next month was a down month. Um, and sometimes the next two, three months was down months. But normally you get a, a bigger consolidation. So what I really want to happen here is the market, uh, this month closes on... Uh, what third? Well, last day of the month is Thursday, so I want for this month, the month of February, to actually close back on uh, the upper Bollinger Band, which is right around. Actually, I got the number right there. It's four nine eight nine. So basically, five five thousand, five thousand, or a little bit lower. Ideally, if that happens, then the market's not really overbought. We could probably still move higher on a short term basis. If it stays here then chances are much uh, March will be a down month. So ideally, if you really bullish, want to be bullish short term, you, you really want to pull back here over the next couple, three days, get around 5,000 or below, and then from there, we could probably keep pushing higher. And uh, the bottom window is the uh, SPX VIX ratio. It's on a monthly time frame. And um, normally, if the SPs make higher highs, and that ratio makes uh, lower highs, you can have a, a short-term consolidation. And that's kind of what's going on here. So I'd like to see the market pull back between now and Thursday. And it's kind of doing it weekly, uh, or, not, or W-E-A-K-L-Y, sure. weekly, not week as in day of uh, in number of days. It's lacking so, strength, right? <laughs> yeah, so I, I like to see a little bit of weakness here. So... Um, if we do that, then March is probably going to be a, an up month. So we'll, we'll see how it trades out. So let's flip it to another chart number two here. Okay, I got it up. Yeah, uh, th yeah so uh, the first chart, we're looking at the monthly chart. The second chart is the weekly chart. So we're kind of going okay. down in time. Nice. And um, this is that ratio uh, back on page one. That was the bottom window. Uh, the second window up from the bottom is the SPX ratio on a weekly time frame. And the S&Ps, if you look over uh, what's going on over the last, since January, basically, the S&Ps have been making higher highs. Well, this ratio just flips sideways here. And that's usually uh, kind of indicative of a, a consolidation. Uh, sometimes they, they snap out of it and start going higher. We'll have to wait and see if that happens here. But if we can back off a little bit here, anyhow, the, the market, what I'm trying to point out here, is not really set up to really go strongly higher forward short term. It needs a rest. It needs a pullback of some sort. Kind of reset the market to, uh, to build some strength going forward. And I, I, th I think, you know, the if the market's up every week, um, it, it gets overbought in time frames, and it, and it actually consolidations are actually good in that uh, it kind of builds energy for the next. Uh, it builds more energy to uh, 
uh, to the upside. So we, uh, uh, consolidation is kind of due here. And the reason why I flipped to chart three real quick. You're making a lot of sense, Tim, even though this market just continues higher, man. I mean, and we all know that parabolic markets are a little dicey, man. And that's, I mean, these runs are pretty extraordinary that we're experiencing right now. So I appreciate you sharing yeah. this info. Go for it. I got number three up there. Yeah, number three. So anyhow, so the monthly charts, ideally you like to see a pullback around 5,000, a little bit lower. Nothing real significant, nothing extremely bearish here. But the market needs to, to build actually some fear in it. You know, Joe Granville back in the day, he said, you know, uh, the market climbs a wall of worry. Well, you really define what a wall of worry is, is basically fear in the market. If you have no fear in the market, you can have you can have really have a setup for a, a devastating market. And the way I measure fear is by the trend. The trend is, uh, definition of a trend is advanced issues divided by declining issues, divide that number by advancing volume divided by uh, declining volume. When we do all that rigmarole, anything above 1.2, you got more volume to the downside on down stocks. And basically, that's kind of a bearish scenario. But fear is actually good for the market. And you know, 1.2 on the trend close and above is when uh, the down volume is starting to increase on the down stocks. And you would think that would be bearish, but it actually is bullish. I see we're kind of running out of time here. But, uh, Can you hang with us? All right, because I know we got a couple more charts. We'll finish this up on the other side of the break, okay? All right. Sounds Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back with Tin. We're on chart three. We're talking S&P. We're talking VIX. We're talking trend. We'll be back in three minutes, folks. Don't go away. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&P just hanging around 5,085. We're positive by five points. We're talking old man Tim Ord. Remember, you can reach Tim at his website, folks, ord-oracle.com. And uh, let's pick up where we left off, Tim. All right. Uh, chart number three, uh, like we said, uh, Joe Granville, you know, to really have a, 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 a rally to continue, you need a wall of fear or a wall of worry, I think he, he said, per quote. And I always tried to figure out what's that mean so i went back and actually used the trend to figure out when the, the trend is in a panic mode that's readings above 1.2 that shows more volume it's going into down stocks and up stocks when you know you think that would be bearish but it actually is bullish and uh, the more fear you got in the market the more the stronger the rally thereafter and i got the kind of a short-term uh type indicators. Bottom two windows are the three-day trend, and next window up is the two-day trend. Okay. And normally, anything above uh, 1.2 in that range on both those two- or three-day trends, normally you're building energy for the next move up. And all that uh, pink area, shade pink areas, are when uh, the two- and three-day trend reached uh, readings of 1.2 or higher. So right now, we got a trend on both of them. Just a little over one. One's one one oh six, the other one's one oh three. So we don't really have a lot of fear here in the market. And we got a gap. If you go on the, the chart there, kind of that blue area up there, that's where a gap yep. is in the market. Uh, the bigger the gaps, normally the big ones get filled, the small ones a lot of times don't. And here we got a big gap, comes in a little bit below five hundred on the SPYs, which is a pretty good target on the monthly chart, because I want the monthly chart by Thursday's close, the close below 5,000, that would suggest we got uh, um, that the rally that started basically over the last couple of months could continue. If it stays above, quite a bit above 5,000, where it is right now, uh, then probably March will be down, uh, be a down month. So we'll see what the next couple of days go. It seems like short order here. We got today, uh, tomorrow, or today's almost over. We got tomorrow and Thursday. And if we can get a decline, fill that gap and close there, chances are March will be a high update. And also I'd like to see that, that the uh, the two- and three-day trend both get in on this potential pullback to get above you know 1.2 on average on the two- and three-day average. If we do that, I think uh, we'll have enough energy that the gap will find support 
and the market will probably push uh, higher all the way through March. We'll have to wait to see that happens. We also and I know you're not gap. forecasting it. I was just uh, going to say it's interesting. The last day of the month, Thursday, we get that inflation data. So maybe that's an impetus to give this market a little oomph in one way or the other, and we'll see. But um, yeah, if it, if, it get, if it gets the oomph to the upside, uh, then out. I think March will be down. <laughs> uh, if yeah. we get an oomph to the downside, then I, I think that would, uh, especially if you get panics in the ticks and trend. Also, I want to point out, back on February 13th, I on the volume chart there, I had a selling climax day. And that selling climax low has not been touched. Most selling climax lows uh, get touched at some point. That comes in around 482. It doesn't okay. have to be, but most of those selling climaxes are tested. Well, this will okay. be tested. You know, there's maybe a probably a, at least a 60% chance that it will, but not a 100% chance. So... Is something I watch for, especially if you test that selling climax and lighter volume. It it, it, it actually would uh, uh, be a kind of a bullish sign, especially if you get the trends, two day trend, three day trend above one point two. You'd really have a good setup for a, 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 another rally that could last a month or longer. So that's nice. that's where I am kind of right now. I'm neutral. I'm not real bearish here because I think the the pullback will be done this week. If there is going to be one, it's going to be this week. And if there's not one, uh, then I'm probably going to stay neutral because that would suggest March could have some trouble. Especially nice. we we don't have enough energy, which I call energy, panics in the ticks and trend to suggest the rally can continue here, not to a rate it has without. You need fear in the market to, to fuel the rally. And right now, uh, we haven't really had fear until basically back in, looks like about mid January. So it, we're due for another. Uh, fear gauge here to to lighten up a little bit or to uh, ignite the market, I guess you might say. So sure, maybe a reason to give some. I, I think we could see five thousand on the S and P's. I hope that area will become support. Sure, so, I was just going to say maybe that gives people an impetus to buy, as in a slight pullback versus sitting at you know fifty one hundred and change practically, as as in um, a little lofty. I think we all see that it might be a little lofty for sure. Reasonable. Yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking. So, um, we got time to move on, or you want to? We do. Talk we got a few minutes this? left, man. I got chart four up here. All right. This is kind of a this is a weekly chart on the uh, inflation deflation ratio, and when the RSI of this inflation deflation ratio gets below thirty, as I print this chart is twenty eight point four five right now, you're usually at intermediate term lows. I marked them all with uh, red circles. And the dark red circles are times when uh, we're going to flip back and forth here a little bit. Okay. Uh, flip to chart number five real quick. I got them all ready. We're there. Go for it. All right. So chart five, if you look at the bottom chart on chart five, it's the 50-day uh, average of the up-down volume. And when that, when the bold, the bold areas on this chart match the bold areas on chart number four. So you got two different methods uh, signaling the same bottom, so I'm trying to point out. Okay. So uh, so it's, a, it's totally unrelated, but different type things, yep. still pinpointing the same bottom. Uh, cool. What On chart number five, what that bottom predicts, a lot of times you go sideways uh, for a number of weeks before the rally begins. And on chart four, a lot of times rally begins pretty much within a couple of weeks at latest. Uh, and sorry, Tim, what is what up. is the bottom? You got two on, different on, methods here. On uh, chart five, what is the bottom that I'm looking at again? I see GDX, the moving average fifty. Is that, and what is that? What I'm looking at in the bottom there for chart five? Yeah, chart five is the bottom. The bottom window is yep. the up down volume with the fifty day average. Okay, cool. So so when it gets below minus twenty. That seems to be the the depth of that indicator, and a lot of times uh, that's the low. And I have uh, marked what I think was red nice. lines across the chart there it. when they Perfect. come in. Nice. And so we're, we hit there actually last week. Uh, now we're still down pretty low. We're but minus thirteen something, but we hit there last week. So even though the market pretty much hasn't changed much, uh, it's making it attempt to test last week's low. But we okay. also now got the RSI 
the RSI is on a weekly time frame, and the 50-day average is on the daily time frame, but it's a 50-day average. So that's almost, well, 21 uh, trading days in a month. So that's a little over a month of, of, of trading for that um, indicator to get down below minus 20. So they're kind of bigger time time frames. One's on the weekly, one's on a, almost a little over a month time frame. So both of them are signaling a low in this vicinity right now. Tim, oh. that was nine. That was, that was what, 20 minutes of action-packed info, man. I really appreciate it. Folks, that was so much info. Always remember, we archive each of these segments right on our YouTube page. Just search TFNN. We'll have this interview up with Tim right on that page. You can reach Tim at his website, ord-oracle.com. Tim, I appreciate it as always, man. Look forward to talking to you on Thursday. All right. See you then. Thank you. Have a great one.